I'm sure he has a lot to share about hardware and make it come alive. I already see some demos on the table. I'm really excited to hear from a student, a hacker, a maker, Kenneth Lin. Give it up for Kenneth Lin. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you guys hear me from the back? Everything's okay? Okay, great. Um, so, before we get started, right, let's like quickly do a survey of like who's in the house. Um, anyone thinks that you are in the wrong talk right now? Because this is like a hardware talk, right? So there's nothing about like slick GUIs and stuff. Okay, I hope you guys are in the correct talk and because it seems like there's a pretty good crowd for a hardware talk like this. Okay, so the, the next question would be, um, who has never like played with hardware in your whole life? Like capacitors and like programming like microcontrollers. Who has, who has never done it in your life? Everyone has done it? I don't believe you guys, man. Is there anyone who has not done it before? Just don't be shy, just raise your hands. Ah, cool. Okay, who's like a web developer here? Like, all you do is eat code, sleep code, and read code. Awesome. Then you are in the right talk as well, even though it's a hardware talk. You have come to the right place. Okay, who has no idea but wants to know like, what this thing can do for you? Who's just curious and you are here? Ah, great. So it's like, everyone's like, really excited like, to know like, what this thing can do, right? Yeah. So um, I'll try my best to share with you like, what this thing can really do and do some cool demos. And hopefully like, at the end of the session, you have some questions for me. Okay, um, so I don't know why, but like, I don't know if it's coincidental or what, but like, the previous speaker had a disclaimer as well. I didn't edit like last minute, I added it like right from the start of the, the time when I started preparing my slides. So firstly, I'm not employed by Spark. Okay, um, I don't work for them, they don't pay me. Um, I'm not paid to come here to do this talk. Uh, it's purely because I, I really enjoy using the platform and I think it's really something very powerful and uh, something that you guys might want to have inside your kit as well, like some development kit that you want to have just because it's really cool. All right, so. I spend most of my time in the forum, in the community. So uh, I answer questions, uh, mainly tackling questions from the beginners. Uh, we have tons of uh, people we are, who are very good with the firmware, low level code and stuff. So I, I don't mess with such stuff. Uh, just once in a while I do some library porting and that's about it. I spend more time trying to get people who are new, try to get their course online, teach them how to program and stuff like that. So, the, so that's my involvement with them. All right, so leading to this, right, the question would be like, what does a life actually mean to you? So this is something that I hope you guys can bring away from the talk today, and hopefully this talk answers your question. All right, so um, before I start off, like, because like, not everyone knows like, who is Spark and what do they do, so I'll just quickly share with you like, what's their background and stuff like that. Like that. All right, so um, the, the founder, Zach Sapola, um, he made this uh, Spark socket. I'm not sure if you guys uh, heard of it before. It looks like this. It was on Kickstarter last year. Um, so what it does is pretty straightforward. So you attach like all the kind of light bulbs that you can buy from outside, attached to this socket over here. And what you can do is that you can control it wirelessly. You can dim the light, set the schedule and stuff like that. But um, he did not um, succeed with this socket. And two months later, he came out with the Spark Core, which was a great success uh, when he launched the Kickstarter last June. So, sorry. So some people might not be aware that they are actually funded by this um, group called uh, Accelerator in Sunton. Uh, I see some JFDI guys in the house. So Accelerator is like a hardware accelerator program. So they came out from there. Um, and the other thing that is good for you guys to know is that they are a Series A company. So they got a funding uh, two months ago, uh, $4.9 million. So you might be wondering, right? Like, you are here at a hardware talk, right? Why do I want to tell you all this information about the company? Because I, I don't want to introduce you a development kit, and like one year down the road, you realize that the company is dead, they are closed down, and the cloud service is no longer there, and you cannot do anything with it. So that, that's the reason why I want to tell you this, that they are Series A right now, they have a lot of funding to do whatever they need to do and get their platform stable. So it's uh, definitely something that you guys might want to consider because of the backing that they have. 
Okay, so the, this is how it looks like. It's uh, pretty small. So this is the bottom view with all the uh, microcontroller and all the hardware, memory, and stuff like that. So um, this is a top view with the RGB LED. So we'll do more demo later. So it's uh, pretty small. If you look over here, this, this is like the spark core. It's like 2 by 3 cm. It's pretty small, but it packs like Wi-Fi and like stuff like that. I'll give you all the geeky details, right? Because it's geek, I'll tell you everything about what you can find in the device. All right, so this is another view of like how the spark core is like and like all the technical stuff, like the hardware and stuff like that. But the whole idea is that it's uh, Arduino compatible. So everything that you learn, like Arduino programming as a beginner, when you go for your like introduction class and stuff like that, everything that you learn there can be applied to this platform as well. And you can do more once you get more advanced. So it's like there's a roadmap for you to follow up. So initially you learn like the same Arduino code, but as you move on, you get to be exposed to more advanced features that you never thought you would want to use it. So that, that's the whole idea about uh, the Spark Core. And it's important to note that uh, this is like version one. So version two is gonna come out really soon. So if you are here and you got motivated and you want to build some hardware, just um, like save up your money and don't buy first, right? I, I think the guys outside will kill me because they are selling the version one. So <laughs> just, just keep your money and you know, like buy the cooler hardware, okay? All right, so I'll give you some specifications of uh, what is inside this small little platform. So the first important thing is like the microcontroller is a 32-bit STM32. For those who are familiar, it's like 32F103, right? Um, it's running at 72 megahertz. You have uh, 128 kilobytes of flash memory, but um, you don't get to use all of them because some of them is taken out by the stack to run the cloud services. Um, you get... Um, 20 KB of uh, RAM, SRAM. And you also get uh, two megabytes of external SPI flash. So that's pretty cool. I'll explain to you guys like what that extra like two megabytes. Like nowadays, like who is who is not even on one GB on your SD card on your phone? Like that's the minimum, right? Everyone has to have like minimum four GB eight. Like why do we even have like two megabytes? What, what can you do? So I'll share with you like why, why is this like such a huge space in such a small device. And the Wi-Fi module that we are using is like the uh, CC3000 from Texas Instrument. So it's really uh, interesting that how they combine like uh, different hardware together and form the spark coil itself. All right, some other stuff that like those who are really familiar with hardware might know, like 12-bit ADC compared to like 10-bit and stuff like that. Um, you have uh, USB as well. You can do like serial COM port and stuff like that on USB. You can do like um, keyboard and mouse emulation. You can send like keyboard keys to your computer just with that same hardware itself. Okay, you get the, the usual features that you get out of a microcontroller. And Despite it being so small, they actually pack in the JTAG inside. So if you really want to hack down to the boot level, bootloader level, you can get to do it as well. Okay, just some other details about like the pins and stuff like that. Okay, so this is the tagline that you can find on their Kickstarter website. So when I look at it, right, there was only one word that I noticed, right? Which is this one. <laughs> right. So why? I mean, let me tell you why. All right. Sorry. All right. So like, I had this light bulb that went off right at the moment that I looked at the campaign. I was like, you know, like there are a lot of lights in school, and and like like nobody's around. Let's start blinking them randomly so that people who comes back to school feels a bit spooky. But you know, if I want to do that with like the typical hardware, I have to stand somewhere and like wire up tons of buttons and start to press them and hoping that, then like, you still have to go to the door and peep, right? Like whether does it work, you know? You have to go and look at it. So I didn't want to do that, right? I was like, I'm going to buy a set of this, a pair of this. I'm going to wire them up and I'm going to do some weird stuff in school. Okay, so if like, if you ever hear the news and like weird stuff happening in SUTD, then you, you know what's going on, you know? All right, so just to share a bit of story on like all the communication stuff that I've done before and why this platform is really so powerful. 
So like this is a picture of my team in uh, my FYP team, like final year project team in uh, SP. So it's really interesting because like you look at like there's like six of us over there, and everyone's like looking at the, the laptop, and we are holding holding on to like a wired camera. So it's really crazy. Like we have to go for a field trip to like monitor our project and stuff like that. We have to bring our laptop, bring our wire, bring our camera and stuff like that. Batteries. So it's really crazy. Like if we want to make any single change to the the firmware, we have to travel down all the way to this place, like open up the cover, just to get access to the hardware and plug in the USB cable, just to program. So it's kind of kind of crazy. So uh, this is the picture of the uh, hardware that we use on the project itself. So like the bottom one is the um, GSM module. So when like when something happens, like an event, that we set the threshold and we start getting SMS from that. But that, that's about it. We can't do like the other way around. So the the hardware can talk to me, but I can't talk to the hardware. So it's like basically the hardware can tell me that oh no, there's a flood coming, but I can I cannot do anything. I can just like just sit at my house and like what should I do now? You know that that's the idea. It's like a one-way communication thing. All right, so like you guys who are making products and hardware and stuff like that, um, like there's like three basic layers that you might go through um, during your development phase to make a product. So the first one, in order to do anything, you need to get your hardware working. So the hardware guys will start thinking of packing like tons of features inside basically because like once that product is in the hands of your customer, you can't do much, right? If you want to do the firmware upgrade, you have to ask them to come back to you. Unless you are selling like a mobile phone like iOS or Android, you can do like OTA. Other than that, like all the hardware that you buy at home, like your washing machine, you have to bring it back to the service center, right? They, they can't tell you like, okay, just plug the, the internet port to your washing machine and let me get the firmware updated, right? Yeah, so that, that was the idea. Like, so people had a, like a constraint on the hardware. They had to think of like tons of stuff, stuff to pack inside just to make sure that they get everything that they want in that particular version and ship it. So the next problem would be like the communication method that the hardware guy has to pack in the hardware itself. Like they have to start thinking like, do I want USB? Um, do I want like RS-232, like RS-485 and stuff like that. So it was like a pretty tough thing for the hardware guy because he had to solve problems that wasn't really his problem, but because like the guys who are working on the firmware and the cloud side, they have to do that, then it becomes his problem because he's the one designing the hardware itself. So when we look at the next level after like we have the base hardware ready, we pass them on to the firmware guys. So the firmware guys has to handle one side of the thing which, which is like the low level stuff like firmware, like get a basic uh, IOs working. And yes, we also think about like TCP IP now, right? Because like the, the people who are working like the UI and stuff, they want some way to control the product. But if you were to do it on a wire, all they can do is like write out a, write out a program and run in a computer. And that, that's the most that they can get out of, it, out of it. So they have to start looking at stuff like TCP IP, which is a, a huge headache for the firmware guys. Like, I don't know if anyone has worked with TCP IP, you, you probably understand like what's the pain of getting the stack on and running it. Okay, so now we move on, like nowadays everything is connected, right? So we wanna somehow like get the product online so that we can communicate with it. So the cloud firmware people, they start to think about REST API, stuff like that, they, so that their mobile applications, their web apps can start to talk to each other seamlessly. So that, that's one area as well. And they have to start thinking about like device service because when your device starts going online, you need something that it needs to communicate to, which is like a server. So they have to start messing with stuff like that. So it was like, everything here makes it really difficult to make a new product that's really um, interactive and you can like upgrade over time. So that, that was like the challenges that people were facing with like all methods of developing. So let's look at uh, very quickly at like two, uh, one old and one new method that people were working with uh, communication. So they had like this thing, like is this familiar to anyone? Uh, has anyone seen this? Cool. This is like uh, one of the pods that maybe the youngsters don't know that. Okay, I, I'm not that old, but you know. So these things like you used to find it on your PC, but nowadays like no one has it anymore. And it's like pretty hard to work with as well. You need a chip to convert the voltages and stuff like that. It's pretty messy. So it, it's not really friendly for you to use. And nowadays we have um, this one, right? We have Wi-Fi now, right? So there's no reason why we don't want to use Wi-Fi on our device, right? So, so the whole idea about the spark comes like this. 
All right. So th this is the, uh, the, the vision that they have for future hardware. So you have the cloud right in the middle, and you have your products out in the field, like in your customers' hands. But on your other side, like your guys can build web um, apps, you can build mobile apps uh, that serves on their iPad, their Mac OS, and stuff like that. So that, that's the idea that they are trying to do, and all the heavy lifting is done by the cloud itself. All right, so let's look at how the communication actually happens between the Spark core and the end user. All right, so they are using these standard uh, protocols called COAP. If you um, go and check out it, it's actually a standard that is available, and they did some modification. And the interesting thing is that they did encryption as well. So like, I should, like really tell you honestly that it's like more secure than your laptop itself, unless you're running VPN or something. So like, there was like last week we were at like one of the hackathon, and I was running my Spark core and my laptop, and one of the guy ran to me. I was like. You know the network is really unsecured and everyone can see what you're doing on the network. So try not to do like, like personal stuff and stuff like that. And I was like, oh no, like why is my call more secured than my laptop? That's pretty weird, right? I mean, so they have really packed in like some really interesting features that you might not think is important, but when you ship your product to your customer, you want to let them know that it's safe, right? Like no one can randomly turn on your washing machine at night. Right? You don't want to have that happen. So on the other side of things, they have the REST API built in as well. So what you do is you can just simply hit on their, their server, and you can start to control your device. So later in the demo, I'll show you guys how this is done. So let's like go through some of the interesting uh, features that they have in this platform. So I mentioned earlier they have a COAP protocol. We have REST. Um, the other one is uh, OTA update. So this is uh, pretty common and like known to people for iOS and Android, right? I mean, like, like iOS 8.1 just came out, and you guys probably have like upgraded it or something. I, I have no idea because I'm like an Android user. So, so the idea is like OTA upgrade of firmware, so you can send your firmware wirelessly to your end user's product without having to actually go there. And the other cool thing is that just like I mentioned about the external flash, right? So it holds like a backup firmware in an event where your OTA fails or something, it will just like revive itself, like get the old firmware, the factory reset firmware in, kick out the old one, like kick out the corrupted one and the thing will boot up again. And that allows you to save it in a case that something goes wrong. So that, that's really cool that it's not really seen in like microcontrollers and hardware and stuff like that. All right, the next interesting thing is like they have the online web IDE as well. So I think the local ID is going to come out, but right now everything is in the cloud. So you, you don't have to bring, like, um, you just have to be in front of a browser in order to do, like, code development and testing and stuff like that. So that's pretty convenient. And uh, just a few weeks back, they came out with a new library for those who are the, like, web developers. They have the Spark JavaScript library. So basically everything that you can do with the command line that I'm going to demo later, you can do it via web. So it's pretty interesting. All right, so the next thing you can do is you can expose uh, variables. So you can basically like, sh like display any values that you want out of the hardware that you're gonna build. Later on, I will do a demo on how that can be done. The next thing you can do is you can call functions. So that, that's like the really important thing. Now, like now you can actually execute something wirelessly. You don't have to be there. All right, some other interesting stuff that I have not tried before, but I think it's really cool. It's like random seed and sync time. So the really cool thing about this is like, like once you get your hardware up and running, right, the, the seed that you can generate is like limited by the hardware generator itself. So what's interesting is that you can talk to the cloud and they have more resources, right, in the cloud. They can generate like tons of random seed for you so that everything that you do with in terms of encryption and stuff like that gets really secure. That, that's a really cool feature. Um, the other thing that we have is also sync time. So you don't need your real-time clock. Like, if you guys know that your computers and stuff, you need to have a battery inside just in case like everything goes off, your time is still in sync, right? So with this device, once, you, once your hardware gets online, you can sync the time with the cloud. So that's really, that's really neat. If your application, like there was a guy who was doing like, uh, I, think, I think it was a dosage pump for his fish tank. So he didn't want his uh, timing to be screwed up, right? So he could sync the time with the cloud, make sure that the schedule is running correctly and he can like bump out the dosages to his like, uh, saltwater tank and stuff like that. So that was really cool. 
All right, so some of you guys might be familiar with this, um, publish and subscribe. So have, have anyone like been working around with publish and subscribe? Okay, cool. So you guys are yeah, aware of like features like that, that's really awesome. All right, so like anything else is like up to your imagination, right? Anything that you can program is up to you right now. <laughs> because like the hardware and the firmware and stuff is all done. Like all the magic happens in the cloud, right? So like how great is your web development team is how much like features and stuff you can pack inside your hardware that you want to build in the future. So one example that they are doing right now is our webhooks. So I, I got on the um, beta for this like few days back. I have not messed around, but uh, that's a really great feature that everyone is looking forward to. All right, so I shall not bore the, like, the beginners or the people who are not like, so familiar with hardware. Let's look at some real demo or some, some real projects that people have done outside so that uh, you have some idea, like maybe you have an idea after this talk. All right, so we have this really crazy guy. Um, he was previously on the, if I'm not wrong, he's like the Raspberry Pi platform. So he had this uh, open energy monitoring system in his house. I can't remember what it's running, but I think it's probably like solar panels and stuff like that. So like in the past, it was really crazy. He had uh, like a Raspberry Pi. I think he had to add like Wi-Fi and tons of stuff just to make this up and running. So when he, when he found about this platform, all he did was to just plug the spark call in, the uh, hardware that he developed, and it was like running neatly in the box. So I think this took him probably like um, two to three days to develop like the full thing and make it even better because he's, he's not able to like make changes um, to his device and do like real-time monitoring uh, without having to write all the stuff because everything has been done for you in the cloud. So the same guy has a weird hobby, right? I don't know why. All right, so he has this like really cool like beehive in his house, in his backyard. I don't know why, but I never bother asking him why. So if you look at the picture on the right side, it's really cool. Like the strip in the center is a temperature sensor. So like the data that he gave to us was like he showed us, but I don't have it in the slides. It's really cool. He realized that the, the bees are able to keep the temperature of their beehive like constant throughout the day. He couldn't have done it like in the past. Right, because of these and he like, do like real-time data logging and stuff like that, he realized that the bees are really effective in doing this, like even in the winter. Like everywhere is so cold, but like 24 hours, the temperature did not really like deviate much. So that was like really interesting and something that was like really cool that he has done. All right, let's look at the next one. So like this guy calls his project a spark garden. So like there's some like, like block diagrams of how he did it, like for those who are really into this kind of thing. So like what he did was like he plugged some sensors to his plants. I don't know. He probably brought like a few million dollar plant or something that he has to monitor twenty four seven, right? <laughs> I don't know, right? So yeah, I mean it's really cool, but that's something that we can think about, right? I mean like we can say that it's an overkill to put something so simple into like plant monitoring, but it's because of the simplicity and like how fast you can get up and, up and running. That's why they did it, right? I mean like it only takes you like five, 10 minutes to get everything up and running and you get something way cooler than anything else they have ever built. So that, that was, that's one point that I think that's really important. So we have one really cool guy as well. He built a weather station out in his uh, garden as well. So like he had this um, module with like solar panels and stuff like that with the antenna. So like he's doing like, um, local data uh, weather monitoring in his house. So at the back, yeah, like he can just log into his web app and tell that like, whether is it raining at his house area and stuff like that. Yeah. So I thought that was really cool and yeah, he pretty much like hacked them together in a few days. Alright, so like for some of the guys who might be more interested in this, um, there's this founder of this project called Brew Pie. So it's like um, open source brewing with uh, Raspberry Pi. So he has been hanging around in the forums for the past few weeks and he made his first prototype with the smart core. So what I wanted to show in this slide was like the size difference. Like there's a significant like uh, decrease in the size itself. So he has like um, the Raspberry Pi and his screen and stuff like stack, 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 stack and stack, right? Just to do something very simple. But uh, with the smart core, he made like one PCB board and that was about it. So I mean, it's interesting to see, right? I mean like why people start to shift between the dev kits they are using. That's probably something like very um, unique. There's some unique features in the new platform that makes them want to come over. 
All right, so um, there's this new project that I've seen recently as well. Um, is have you guys heard of the NAS, like the wi the Wi-Fi uh, thermostat, right? So this guy made this new thing as well. This is really cool. Okay, so um, like recently it's October Fest and stuff, right? So everybody wanted to like make something fun. So they had this like wireless like counter. There's a tilt sensor inside. So like whether you tilt enough or not, like it will sound a siren or something like that. So it's really cool. But since we are in Singapore, right, and you guys are Singaporean and stuff like that, maybe you want to do like something like a coffee machine hack. I don't know. Like this guy like hacked the coffee machine and measure like how much coffee is left in his uh, container and start making more if he doesn't. Right, or if you are like me and uh, you get really bored at home sometimes, right? So maybe you want to do something like this. Oops, sorry. All right, so I, I obviously didn't program the last part, but anyways, yeah. You get the idea, like, if you are bored and stuff like that, it's so simple to make it work like this that I just did it anyways. It took me, like, five minutes. All right, great. So um, I'm going to do, like, the demo really quick so that you have some idea of what's, what's going on. So the setup I have today is, like, the humming board, um, the local cloud, and the Spark core itself. So what I'm trying to show you over here is that one day if, like, Spark decides to, like, close down for, for real, you have everything already open source here right now that you can run the full stack. And you, if you have like a web developer team and stuff like that, you can probably nail everything from there onwards. Right, so that, that's the demo. So everything here is like offline, okay? So let's try out, uh, I'm gonna try like the first demo. It's like a, a jig that I built um, for some testing purposes. Uh, okay, let's see what it can do. Okay, uh, sorry about that. Um, let me just do a really quick demo over here. Um, all right, so I have this uh, dashboard over here, right? Um, so once I get the thing up and running, you can see some data running. So let me just try to refresh the dashboard. Okay, I'll just do the demo for like the torch over here. So we call it a message torch. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is to change the mode because it's currently in the off mode right now, so you don't see any light going on, right? So I'm gonna just change it. So I'll just do the first comma, which is a uh, spark list. So basically what it does is like, it just tells me like which of the spark core is online and stuff like that, all right? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make it a wave. So I'm gonna change the mode. So I can change to mode number one. So basically it's like Spark Core. Torch is the name of the device. And uh, the function I want to call is called params. And I'm going to change the mode. So basically that's what it does. That's nothing that complicated. All right, so I change it and it's on right now. Okay, so what else can I do with it, right? I can change to other modes like Rainbow. If I want to change the brightness, I can do that as well. 
So like, if you guys notice, right, that, like there's no wires here, right? Everything is Wi-Fi, okay? So, thanks. All right, so, yeah. so everything is like just Wi-Fi, right? There's no wires connected to my laptop and stuff like that. Right, so like if I deploy the product and I think it's like not bright enough, right, I can change it as well. So I can, I can just change the parameters that I set to brightness. Okay, it's not changing. Okay, so you, you get the idea like how it works. So I'm gonna do like a really cool demo before I wrap up everything. So let me get back to the mode over here. Let, let me just reset everything. Right, so like one, like someday you decide to do some interactive kind of demo and stuff like that. Right? Maybe this is something you want to consider. So like this thing is like wireless now, right now. So I want to like make it frame up. So how do I do it, right? So all I have to do is just like wave my hands. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. So you, you get the idea, like so, like it's like magic, right? So I do this, and it frames up. Yeah. So so like everything that's going on here is purely wireless. Like my watch is connected to my phone. My phone to the Wi-Fi, so Wi-Fi to the core itself. Yeah, so that's something pretty neat. So if I want to change the mode, that's why I can do that. Okay, I don't know, maybe the demo is like really nervous today, right? So you, you get the idea, right? So like, what, what I demo demonstrated was like, everything was like just like API calls. So I send the call, like the, the request to the cloud, and it goes to the device. Yeah, honestly, like acting weird today. Like it's supposed to just flame out for a while, stop, right? But it's like flaming all the way. Up today. Okay, so like um, I'm pretty much done with my talk. Uh, I wish I could demo more, but uh, I had uh, too much time on the slide, so maybe open like the floor for questions. Thank you, Kenneth. Thank you, Kenneth. Who's that? Really excited. I'm sure all of you are, especially after the demo and uh, all the web developers, hardware hackers. I'm sure you have questions. Can we have the first question, please? Don't you want to build this yourself? Where do I buy the Spark hardware? Where do I buy the Spark hardware? Alright, so like there's like three or four places you can buy. Like the first, yeah. sorry, like the first bowls are like convenient places, like outside, like 12 gigs is selling them. Right. Uh, yeah. Right. You know, just just support them. Like, I don't. Know. All right. Uh, you can buy from them directly as well. Um, some other places sell like Seed Studio as well, so it's pretty easy to find. Yeah. Or if you the do the capture the flag right. competition, ctf.bcam.sg, second prize and third prize wins a spark core. Join me. Join me. That's right. Thanks, Robin, for the tip. Free spark cores. And you can have a flicking fire in your living room. Yeah, I mean, if you guys want to build this, right, it's like just three wires for the LED and just a spot core and a power bank. And you can do the same effect as well. Everything is open source, right? So you can build it. Yes. Um, I'm just curious about your watch. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, what kind of watch is that? Yeah, it's a pebble. Watch. It's a pebble. Right. Pebble. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. cool. Speaking of watch, uh, I uh, there's oswatch.org. It is an open source BLE watch created by the product manager of Fitbit. If you're interested, you can make your watch based on. I mean, there are so many open source yeah. hardware examples. Yeah. Right. Any other questions? Yeah. Where do you get that LED? Where do you get that? <laughs> Is it Adafruit? Let me just know. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you you can buy from Adafruit, but it's like four times the price. So I mean, there's somewhere else on the other side of the world with like cheaper ones. So Simlin. Sorry, Simlin. Simlin. Uh, I never tried Simlin, but. So Kenneth, here's my next question: Where do you get your cheap gadget from? Like, I'm sure you know the. Like, like where, where is your source? If it's not Adafruit, where is your? Alright. Um, like. Some like really interesting things like I actually visited the factory for Spark itself, like in Shenzhen, in Shenzhen. yeah, in China. So I went with the uh, manufacturing manager, so I know pretty much everyone on the team. So I know how they make their stuff and stuff like that. Yeah. 
the point is make friends. Yeah, that's right. Because you are very active in the Spark Forum, right? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I mean, I answer pretty almost much. all, not yeah. all, but yeah, almost all. So get involved. Like any of us with a laptop and a website, I think you can just get involved and people like Kenneth will be helping you as a beginner. Any other questions? He has really some interesting. Yes, the mic is. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned it, but how is how do you program the Spark Core? What's the I? What's the tool you use? Alright, so like uh, I mentioned earlier, it's like an online IDE right now. So if you want to compile it locally, it's possible as well. It's just basically make and GCC. If you are familiar with the stuff like that, yeah. So uh, so does it run an operating system on it or is it? More uh, no, it's just like a uh, normal like Arduino code. Yeah, right now they don't have like RTOS and stuff, like Pebble has RTOS and stuff like that, but that's what they are going to explore in the next few months. So, yeah, right now it's just native code. Oh, okay. Any other questions? Right, uh, if not, uh, thank you, Kenneth. I'm sure you'll be hanging around, and if you're too shy, go and ask him uh, to make personal questions if you have. Right, thank you, Kenneth. Thank you, thank you so much.